Good morning again. It's Randy with Randy's RB Bible Study. I hope y'all are enjoying this. <laughs> I am, and the Lord twists it around and turns it around every single time. Here we are. Jesus dies on the cross, and I don't want to minimize this. I'm in Luke, but he's died on the cross. He's buried in Joseph's tomb. He is risen. Praise the Lord. He's alive. Now that in itself should be like the, the that is the pinnacle of everything that could ever happen in the world and the universe, if I might add, and be so bold. So let's get into this. 24 and 13, the road to Emmaus. Now behold, two of them were traveling. <clears throat> now Jesus is risen and is appearing to people. He appears to two on the way to Emmaus is what's going to happen. So now behold, two of them were traveling that same day in a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they they talked together of the things what would happen. I mean, this is news traveling. <clears throat> this is big news. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them but their eyes were restrained so they did not know him and he said to them what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad <laughs> then the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said to him are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and you not know the things that just happened in these days and he said to them Jesus said, what things? So he said that the things concerning Jesus and Nazareth was found a prophet, mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and then they crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, uh, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived in the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive, and certainly of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And then he said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to suffer to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded to them the scripture the things concerning himself <laughs> you know they finally get their eyes open and then they drew near to the village where they were going and they constrained them saying abide with us for it is toward evening and the day far spent and he went on to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with him that he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they knew him, capital H, and he vanished from their sight. Look, this sounds crazy. These guys are like, man, we thought this dude was going to come and, and take over this Roman government is what they were thinking Messiah would do. And then he dies and now their body's gone and these women are saying angels are there. And uh, as as Jesus expounds to him the scripture concerning himself, I wanted to note there that all scripture is about himself. Friend, if you're a Christian you're not reading the Old Testament, you're missing out. But I want to know uh, how your walk is and because we're going to talk about walking and fellowship and walking with with Christ we see these guys walking with the Lord you know that walking in darkness is lying let's just get that out let's just get the cat out of the bag walking in darkness is lying we need to know this as Christians Christian you need to know now walking in fellowship we walk in fellowship in in many ways we do that in spiritual assemblies uh, Matthew eighteen twelve, where two or th more, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of these, of them. Sorry, so he's in the community of saints. We walk when we walk with him. 
uh, these gentlemen say, did not our hearts burn within us as he walked with us and talked with us on, on the road when he opened scripture to us? They go on to talk about in Luke 24. That's our call. It's our call to walk into fellowship. Walk into fellowship with Christ. Jesus is our Lord. And walking with him aids in our testimonies as we speak about him to other people. We're able to, because we have fellowship with him. You know, fellowship. And uh, it is a condition, uh, a spiritual, uh, we need to receive this spiritually. It's a condition of our spiritual uh, state. Jesus says in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and him with me. Walking with God, fellowship. Christ having fellowship uh, is, is a prerequisite and a call, uh, but also a part of the believer's life. What does that really mean? Uh, the Greek word for walk uh, is parapet peto, which sounds like purpose to me, but one of the words, there are two words here I'm going to highlight. Peripatio, maybe it says like that. P-E-R-I-P-A-T-E-O, if you need to know, uh, to look it up yourself, because I don't say these words right. That Greek word for walk, that's to have our being. That's to deport ourselves, to order our manner of life. That's, that's the way we 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 order our manner of life now in uh that's in uh galatians 5 16 then then in verse verse 25 he's, he has another walk which is called stoicheo stoicheo s-t-o-i-c-h-e-o that's another kind of walk that means to arrange in line you know kind of like marching <laughs> you know uh, military men they march in a line they stay in line uh, lanes on a road we stay inside the lanes we walk that's the way we we walk you know we walk so to speak you can find that in Romans uh, 4 12 I want to add a scripture in Amos Amos says can two walk together except they agree see now we're going to talk about our walk how is your walk today because are, are are you walking in light today are you are you walking in darkness now if you don't you're not a believer you're most definitely walking in darkness that's your that's that's what you know and you don't even you don't even know it <laughs> until you meet the lord jesus christ and his word that divides and separates us and uh, reveals to us the darkness that's inside of us. Um, you know, I didn't add that, but you know, Jesus says, if your eye offends thee, how dark is that darkness, he says. We should pluck it out. Actually, is what he says. It is better to, ma it is better to go in maimed with one eye than uh, to go uh, is better to go maimed into heaven with one eye than to go into hell with both eyes. So, and God doesn't, Jesus does not say literally to take your eye out, but spirit spiritually, so he's very literal. Remove it from your life. So, let's talk about darkness. Uh, when we have fellowship with the Lord, it's koinonia. That's you probably have heard that, uh, you know, that's the Greek words koinonia. We have. Uh, co communion we have a partnership we have uh, companionship with each other in the in the body of church we have companionship more importantly with the Holy Spirit though as Christian believers so let's get on with the with the main 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 deal Randy what what's up all right John 8 12 said said he that follows me will not walk in darkness but but, but have the light of life. The light of life. And then in John, 1 John 5, 7, if we say we have fellowship, this is, this, is the, this is the daddy of them all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in dar darkness, we lie and do not the truth. We lie. So what, what is dark, what is walking in darkness? What does that look like? 
<laughs> it looks pretty dark, doesn't it? <laughs> you can't see a thing. I need a flashlight. Yes, you do. I'm glad that you uh, come to that realization because you do need a light. You need a flashlight. And his name is Jesus Christ. And the lamp to your soul and the lamp to your feet will be this word right here. This will guide you. This is your Bible basic instruction before leaving earth. We're all going to leave earth. We're all going to die. Are you ready to die? I'm saying, are you ready to die and meet your maker, Jesus Christ, who claims to be our maker? All right. I hope you are. If you're not, you're walking in darkness. And what does that look like? Uh, generally, this is understood as a, to refer to a person who is continually living in sin. Did you hear that? This is a person that lives in sin. Okay. This is, this is your Christian who says that they're a Christian, but they live in sin. And living, I mean living. Now, darkness is a sin, synonym. We talked about that for evil. Falsehood. It's falsehood. A person walking in darkness is involved in some individual sin. I'll say that again. A person that is walking in darkness is involved with some individual sin. Now, John, knowing that Christians sometimes feign spiritually, here's where we get. I think this message of grace has just gone too far, y'all. Yes, we have grace. Yes, we have forgiveness. Yes, we need to. Yes, we sin as Christians. So that sounds hypocritical. No, it isn't because there's a difference between sinning and growing and pro, you know progressing and repenting and living a life of repentance as versus a living a life where you're just an, I just believe in God and I just live in sin. I just live with my boyfriend or girlfriend. I just am. I just stay. I, nothing changes. I'm, I'm stay a homosexual. I, I I'm a drunkard. I'm a, now nothing has changed in life. There's no evidence of Jesus Christ in your life. That is not walking that is not that is walking in darkness because john knowing that christians sometimes feign spiritually while engaging in acts of disobedience were, ugh, me too i would got two hands up you know a christian who says he is in fellowship with god god is the light but is disobeying him walking in darkness is lying and that's what you gotta that's what you gotta face that's what i mean that that hits home for every christian and you need to face that it, 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 there's no doubt about it you're lying if you're walking you're going to church and you haven't dealt with you're lying you're lying to god maybe you can fool all the people around you you might even be able to deceive yourself to some degree but you're definitely not going to deceive god john uses darkness to refer to sin well it's all over the Bible, y'all. 1 John 1, 5 through 6 says, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. 1 John eleven ten. But if a man walk in the darkness, he stumbles because there's no light in him. In Acts 26, 18, is to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. These are summaries of these scriptures, so I just want you to know just so I could fit them in my page. Luke 1, 79, to give them light that sit in darkness. First Thessalonians, you are children of light, not of darkness. Colossians 1, 3, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? Second Corinthians, be not equally unequally yoked with unbelievers for what fellowship and communion does light have with darkness? So, Ephesians 6 12 says for we are not wrestled against flesh and blood but against principalities powers and the rulers of darkness of this world so we get the idea of walking in darkness right we get the idea of what walking is is to order our steps we're to walk in the light we are children of the light. If you're a Christian you're a child of the light the word is a lamp to your feet in Psalms 119 105 John 8 12 says on the light of the word world he that follows me shall not walk in darkness do not walk in the flesh walk after the spirit there's a order your steps after the spirit okay the Lord is the light and my salvation and Daniel 2 22 says he reveals his deep and secret things what is 
in darkness. First John 1 John 1.5 says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness. Genesis 1.3, God says, and this is your and my mandate, let there be light. Today, let there be light in your life, the light of the world. If you're walking in darkness today, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not a happy ending story, and I don't know how to tell it to you. I could beat you over the head with it, but I can't do that. I, I want to because I, I'll tell you why I want to. And uh, maybe it sounds like that, but I love you. I, I want to because I love you. I, would, I don't want anybody, what I believe to be true, I'm talking to you unbelievers. What I believe to be true is that if you die without Christ, um, then you will go to, to hell and then the lake of fire. If you say that you're a Christian today, now that's the unbeliever. Now, if you say you're a Christian today and you're not walking after God and walking after the things of the Lord, then there's the worst scripture of all that I've ever read in my life, which is convicting to all of us, is, Lord, Lord, didn't we, didn't we? And he says, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice on." Righteousness, you who practice darkness, you who live in darkness, you who practice this, you keep on sinning, you live in sin. See, we don't we don't continue to live in sin, guys. We 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 sin. I mean, we have our flesh with us. We sin in thought, word, deed. I mean, we. But God is dealing with that, and you should be changing and growing past those things. You see what I mean? And I don't want anybody to 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 die without the Lord today. If you're a believer, you're supposed to be walking in the light. You are, you are the light because you have the light of Christ in you and you are supposed to be proclaiming it. And that's what I want. If you're an unbeliever today, accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Ask Him for forgiveness. He's the light. He is the, he is the, light. He's the only life you're going to get that's meaningful. Everything else is, as King Solomon said, chasing after the wind. So, what do you do? Yeah, you, you have to understand that you're living in darkness and you know that you are. I don't have to tell you. You know in here. You know, if you're committing adultery, cheating, stealing, lying, you know, you're, you're hiding from all that stuff. So if you're living in darkness, you're living a lie because God is convicting you and the Holy Spirit is convicting you. Unless you're under judgment now and he's just completely stopped and he's just allowed you to tarry on because you've just rejected him and direct him. There is... There is cautionary uh, scriptures against rejecting God and, and His forgiveness. And it's the only sin that can be not forgiven. And it only makes sense. What's the only sin that can't be forgiven? Is rejecting Christ and His offer of salvation and turning, repenting, and offering yourself unto Him as Lord and Savior. And you could do that today right where you sit. If you're in an RV today, you could do it. If you're wherever you're at, you don't need to be in church. You should go to church, but you don't need to be in church. You, you could do it right now. You say, God, I'm a sinner. And uh, I hear, uh, I heard what Randy said, and I, and I agree with what, I agree with what you're saying in my heart, that I need you, and uh, I need your forgiveness, and I need your mercy. And most of all, I need you to help change me. Put the light in, in me, Lord. Help me to walk in after you and after the light, and out of the darkness, into the light, forever, in Jesus' name. Will you do that today? I hope you do. I'm Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. I love you. More importantly, Jesus Christ loves you to death, literally. Okay, God bless.